Hey, this is the fourth part of this manhua. If you didn't watch previous parts, then watch now, link in description. By the way, let's get started. We see some government officials come to meet Roman Eleven, Senior Secretary of Political Affairs Min Hyun Tik, Chief of National Security Joe Myinghak, and Senior Secretary of Public Relations Jiang Jin Sok. All exit from the car, and they see in front of the Blue House main door Captain Han is waiting. Captain Han show them the way. Sometime later, they finally meet with Roman Eleven. After seeing him, their sweat begins to flow. They try to say, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. After hearing that Captain Han thinking what type of pleasure they are talking about when they are meeting with a terrorist, they start introducing themselves by saying, I am the senior secretary of public. That time Romans stop their talking and say, I have just two demands. Everyone in Seoul must leave the city without exception, and all national department heads must gather here. Roman also says you have until midnight tomorrow to finish these tasks. Sometime later we see they are heading back from the Blue House. In the car they are shaking in anger and they say his demands are too unreasonable. Senior Secretary of Public Relation Jiang Jin Sok remained silent. Then he says mobilizing all the military troops from the city in itself is a tall order. But telling us to evacuate around 10 million people from Seoul in 18 hours is ridiculous. Then other two officials start cursing Roman Eleven. Other side, Captain Han asks Roman Eleven if there is a reason for which you want everyone in Seoul to leave. Roman silently says that Seoul will soon become a battlefield. I don't want innocent people to get mixed up in this and die. Sometime later, they return to the Capital Defense Command Center. All other officials are asking about meeting with Roman Eleven. Prime Minister and Acting President Lee jun hyop said, what did Roman specially ask for? After hearing about Roman Eleven demands, they all look depressed. One of them said that we need to shift our government base and national councils to Guashin or Sejong before anything else happens. In reply, another man says that's the move you want to make right now. You are saying we can evacuate 10 million people by midnight. Senior Secretary of Public Relations Jiang Jin Sok shouted to them by saying that we have to at least make a show of doing it. Who knows what he will do if he gone crazy again. Amid all the commotion, the old man remained silent. Another place we see Sion's shooting the door lock and saying I am Roman Eleven's best friend. She also says you realized they weren't cops right. Those pank who come here had to kidnap you are from Aegis security. She also said, would you like to come with me? A few moments later, they are going down the stairs. Some military force came up to catch them. Because of that, Sion's drop a grenade towards them. In a second, grenade blast and kill all the soldiers. After seeing that scene nurse Kim Bora shaking in fear. We see in an unknown place lots of Chinese secret agents come to catch Beak Sion. Chinese secret agent Chan Yonhua says it isn't getting a hundred people a bit too much. Her comrade Wang Qiuqing reply that the other side will be teaming with troops soon. Those punk from the Middle East will just pop in for a while, so keep an eye out. That's why we should overshadow them with our numbers. But suddenly a man came out from that house and was smiling menacingly. Sometime later we see that field with crops. All the Chinese secret agents were killed by that man. In the Capital Defense Command Center, they received a report that all forces of the Capital Defense were destroyed around the Han River. Some of the special operation troops were ambushed all over the city. Jang Young Ho says, have you prepared? They replied, yes, sir. We have got all the firepower concentrated on the coordinates of the Blue House. We are fully prepared to do it. In the Blue House, Captain Han thinking, why aren't they doing anything? There is no evacuation order. There is not much time left until midnight. He also asks himself, but what am I? Am I a hostage? Then Roman Eleven come from his behind and say, let's go. Captain Han get confused and thinking, where do you want to go? Few time later, the military reports that Roman Eleven has left the Blue House. I repeat, Roman Eleven has left the Blue House. In the military truck, we see they are going. Captain Han thinking, shouldn't you at least tell me where to go? Suddenly, Roman says go straight. 
when the captain sees people walking around freely, he thinks why are people playing outside at a time like this? Aren't they alerted, or else the alert system didn't work? It's a matter of evaporation. He has already taken over the blue house. Is it really the time to fool around? He cursed the people. One helicopter following them and reporting that Roman 11 seems to be moving to the National Assembly. The National Assembly. I repeat Roman 11 is heading to the National Assembly. Military chief thinking why is he heading to the National Assembly this time? There are no troops there. But suddenly someone reported him to the chief. It's not the National Assembly. Roman 11 passed the National Assembly. After hearing that military chief again get shocked and thinking then where he is going now. In the BTN Broadcasting Corporation. They shouting it's a breaking news. Roman 11 is moving to the National Assembly right now. TV broadcasting reporter start saying. Hello, I am Kim Joo Young of BTN News. According to the breaking news, Roman 11. That time behind the TV reporter glass broke and all the people got scared. All the people looked in the smoke. Suddenly Roman 11 come out from the smoke and all the people start saying it's Roman 11. Captain Han run away and come to the broadcasting manager and he says turn on the camera and broadcast the news. Do you want to see me die? We see the same old man standing somewhere and his subordinate reporting about Roman 11. That yesterday he took the blue house. All government and politicians, including Jang Yang Ho, have been evacuated. An old man thinking Roman 11 is so unpredictable. He also asks about Mayol. His subordinate replied Mayol was awake again. He's been injected with serum and he is recovering fast. Old man also wants to know where is Siong HWA yet? Subordinate reply, I think he isn't answering me on purpose and three samples and serum were stolen from Kukiwen laboratory. Then he handed a tablet to the old man. Old man watches Siong HWA stealing medicine from the laboratory. Other side after broadcasting they are moving and Captain Han thinking why do he want to make innocent citizens suffer? They have nothing to do with this. To be honest, when I first heard his speech, I was glad that he was doing this. But why is he threatening citizens who have nothing to do with it? To get revenge on the government. But he can go to higher places and do whatever he wants. Is he just venting his anger? These all the questions are spinning in Captain Han's mind. Then they arrive at the elevator side. Captain Han asked Roman, are you going back to the blue house? Roman say, no. I am going to get a helicopter first. The Captain Han agreed and clicked the elevator button. When elevator door opens Captain Han and Roman sees inside the elevator, there is already an unknown man standing. Captain Han tried to tell that man to get off quickly. Why aren't you getting off? But that man remained silent. Then the lift door closed. Captain Han thought, is he blind? Roman 11 is right in front of you. Suddenly, he notices that no button is pressed. Then why didn't that unknown man get off when we were getting in the elevator? Suddenly, that man injecting an unknown medicine into his body and the Captain Han noticed it. After that, we see his killing intent and his laughing menacingly. Roman looked behind. Surprisingly, that man kicked Roman chest with all his might, but Roman didn't react. After that he again makes a front kick and then with a powerful drop kick Roman 11 goes into his knees. Captain Han thinking what is happening. In an instant did he beat the undefeated Roman 11. Roman 11 sighed and stand up. Then launched a massive punch to that man. But he missed but that unknown man hit Roman in eyes. With that they start fighting each other. Because of that fight elevator wire broke and it is going down with its full force. By the way guys you can see how happy Captain Han is. When the elevator lands to the ground with a loud boom. Roman get kicked out. He breaks the elevator door and flies away. That unknown man trying to confuse Roman with his speed. Then decided to launch an attack from the Roman 11's behind. But Roman 11 grabs his throat in an instant. Roman says I need to tell you something first. I have an appointment now. That man saw a Roman sword missing from his back. And thinking where it is. We found out it is too late to avoid it. With one hit of the sword, his chapter ends.
Then Roman Eleven says to Captain Han to move on. When they are gone, that unknown man injects another medicine to his body and laughs. Sometime later, when Roman and Captain Han reach the top of the building and see their helicopter is missing. Captain Han say, looks like the people in the broadcasting station to the helicopter. Captain Han thinking, what do you want me to do about it? If you want me to get a helicopter, do you think I can just pull it out of nowhere? Roman points his finger in the sky and says, I am talking about that helicopter. Captain Han trying to see in the sky, where is the helicopter? We see there is indeed a helicopter and unluckily those two hooligans who are spying on Roman 11. Suddenly, they notice the Captain Han waving his hand at them. They are confused and saying at this altitude, how did he spot us? Another pilot takes the binocular and says, I will check it out. Don't lower the altitude. He sees that Captain Han trying to saying them. Land here and subscribe Manhua Ghost YouTube channel. By the way, pilot saying, isn't that a suicide mission? Why would you land in front of that monster? They look to the left side of their helicopter, and there is already Roman Eleven's sword pointing to them. Few moments later, we see that two pilots standing on the building rooftop and cursing themselves. On the other side, Captain Han say to Roman where you want to go. Roman replied to the nearest bridge. Captain Han thinking about citizens. If it's the closest bridge. It's Mapo Bridge. In Defense Command Center Secretary saying. We have received a report that Roman Eleven is told the helicopter and has left the broadcasting station. After hearing that they all get frustrated, suddenly she got another report that Mapo Bridge got destroyed. After destroying the Mapo Bridge, Roman Eleven commanded the Captain Han to go to the next bridge. Captain Han shaking in fear. In a TV report, we see a reporter saying that Roman Eleven, a terrorist who illegally occupied a blue house and cost 100 casualties, is now on the run. And the destruction of Mapo Bridge, the main road connecting souls. Suddenly another report come. She says it's a breaking news. Mapo Bridge, Sigang Bridge and Wanheo Bridge were destroyed. Roman Eleven was caught on camera destroying the Yanghua Bridge just now. Roman Eleven is moving in a helicopter and he is committing sabotage without hesitation. People are thinking, is he trying to cut off all the Han River's bridges? It's been less than 10 minutes since the news came out and he has already destroyed so many bridges. Then will everyone in Gangbuck be get trapped? Some people watching that on TV and they didn't care. They say, what do you think? That's going to cost a fortune to rebuild the bridge. His wife said, shouldn't we get out of Seoul too? But his daughter said she didn't care. She was supposed to meet his friends in Hongdi. Suddenly, a breaking news came that prisoners have escaped from Seoul Southern Prison and Seoul Detention Center. There are many phone calls coming in, but no police appear to be on the move, which is likely to worsen the situation. They also say, citizens should not go out and they should thoroughly crack down on security and stay in their rooms. After that, the family shakes in fear and sees how prisoners are committing crime now. Burglary and mass assaults have been happening everywhere. There are reports of a series of arsons in cars and shops. They notice that Roman Eleven's fear would not allow the police to conduct proper policing. After seeing that scene, you can shout and say pack your things now. Let's get out of here before it's too late. In the Defense Command Center, all the officials are seeing public security has now collapsed. Citizens who felt insecure and threatened should get home quickly. South Korea's capital city has fallen. Down Seoul is in full chaos. After all of that, Roman Eleven went back to the Blue House. Captain Han looked at the city and it's burning. He thinking, Roman Eleven, is this what you wanted Korea to look like this? The other side in the Defense Command Center Secretary says Ambassador Grant said Roman Eleven was planning a terrorist attack in downtown Seoul yesterday. He has already returned to his home country in response to emergency measures. Current Prime Minister says as the President's deputy, I will contact the United States Force Korea. But old man Jang Haung says, I am going to call them myself. We see in the Pentagon they are watching the previous part of this Manhua. They are discussing about Roman. Someone said, is there a way for our military to defeat him? 
Another man says maybe we can ask the DARPA guys and they will have the answer. Another man with lots of hair say, well, they always make a lot of weird stuff. Lady says Paul made a one-time deal with whatever request he made in return for protecting his relatives. Blonde hair guys say wasn't surplus too small for a one-time deal? His relative was an American citizen sent. We have already secured him and even if he asked for more. Black guy stops him and says don't forget about the topic at hand. Roman 11 killed the president of his country and seized his official residence by force. Imagine if it wasn't Korea, it was America and Washington. Blonde hair guys smile and say although Korea is a military power, but there is no way to compare them with us. In reply, he says what if he set foot on the mainland by his own will? What would you do then if he did the same thing to us? Are you planning on dropping a nuclear weapon on the mainland? Suddenly someone come and report him. Commander, we have received a request for direct assistance from the Korean government's acting president. In reply, the commander thought and told the United States forces Korea to withdraw as soon as possible. He also says the United States has an agreement with Roman 11, so tell them to withdraw all their troops before we get in trouble. His subordinate agreed, but trying to say then the acting president of South Korea's reply. Commander say, let it go. I am sure they will understand that if we don't reply it's better not to hurt each other. Sometime later Korean officials watching USA official press briefing. They say our mission is to defend Korea's freedom and democracy. Together with South Korea, we will curb North Korea's attacks and provocations and protect the Korean people from war. The personal revenge of individuals has led to the Korean government facing an unfortunate port situation at the casualties of the President of the Republic of Korea and the citizens of Seoul. I am very sorry to hear that. But this is not a provocation situation by an enemy invasion, and it is not a crisis that causes casualties as a deterrent to war. The South Korean military position is that there is a factor that can infringe on South Korea independent national rights, so there is no need to be misunderstood through active measures. But I hope that the decision of our military will be an opportunity for friendship between the United States and Korea so that Korea can become more united. The basic framework of the Korea US alliance is based on trust, as a promised eternal partnership. Guys, this is like after breaking up with my girlfriend and then she saying we will remain friends. By the way, someone comes and reports that Roman 11 destroyed the main line of defense near the Han River. It was fully destroyed. Everyone needs to be evacuated to the rear of the metropolitan area. Old man Yong Young replied, I will not evacuate. I can't back down any longer. I need to meet Roman 11 in person and talk to him. Roman 11 sees the car from a helicopter. Then he jumps and lands on the ground. Ground reporter after seeing that saying it's a breaking news. The current deputy president Lee Jun Hyop is facing Roman 11, the terrorist, who still don't know if we can reverse this situation through negotiations. Other side, he says, I am the prime minister Lee Jun Hyop. He is in fear, but still he says now Roman 11, can't you just stop? I can't stop you. I don't have the strength to do that. I am just watching. If you come, the only way for us to be safe is to evacuate. That's something you know better than me. If there is anything wrong with it, it is the people involved in the past. You need to question those people who have punished you. Roman hears all of that but remains silent. We see the real one talking to Roman was the old man Jang Young Mim. He continued that the citizens have done nothing wrong. I am asking you this earnestly. I am not asking for forgiveness, but to the citizens of Seoul who have nothing to do with it. Please give them generosity. Stop attacking Seoul. Give peace back to the citizens. All of this happening in a live broadcast. Then finally we see Roman start to talk that. In the end, Jang Young Ho didn't show up after hearing that all of them get shocked. Roman also says if he doesn't show up. I will never stop either, you know if this country protects him. I will destroy this whole place until he shows up. And reply they say why do you have to meet Jang Young Hu? But Roman reply no, I have to kill him. 
Prime Minister trying to say this because he is the bully's grandfather? Roman calmly say. Jang Young Ho, I think you know why. You are the one who pushed my parents into a corner. It was done by your orders. Old man youngerly reply through Prime Minister that, don't act like a child. This doesn't bring your dead parents back to life. Of course, it was an unjust and terrible death. But that wasn't the fault of Seoul citizens and the Republic of Korea. How can you feel better when all the people in the world die and be unhappy? You just want to see Korea in a pile of shit, don't you? After hearing that Roman greet his teeth, he waves hand to call his sword. After that, the sword came to the ground with a loud boom. Then he grabs his sword and angrily says, I have told you. Bring Jang Young Ho's head here, if you protect him. If you make a move, then Korea will become my enemy too. If you don't want to die, kill me. Either it's just you or the whole Korea. That's the only way to settle it. So that's it guys, if you want part 5, then like and comment. And subscribe our Maniwa Ghost YouTube channel for more quality full content.